Today the topics we're going to be focusing on are angles and distance management. That's what we're going to be looking out for in this video because that's what Taekwondo and these crazy kicks and no punches to the face, that's what this allows is this crazy ass sport. So let's watch 2015 Olympic sparring. Right out the gate you're going to see this. Big thing that we have to talk about is distance management here. So he is obviously the aggressor and then this guy is defensive. Why this doesn't work in Taekwondo especially is first, it's a long range combat sport and it's a small cage or not cage, but it's a small um, arena, what, whatever the fuck you want to call it. You don't usually have a lot of room and you have to find a way to use angles in order to get out. And this first example is something that I wanted to break down first because we're going to see this throughout the entire video. We already see the less aggressive opponent gets overwhelmed and then kicked right in the fucking chin. So now we're going to see an axe kick here and I want to talk about why this isn't an MMA. So why you don't see the axe kick in MMA other than John Jones is because of John Jones's range. You are able to pull off a lot more kicks in Taekwondo because you have to get creative with the angles. I'm going to give you a couple examples of Taekwondo kicks. You have outer crescent kicks inner crescent kicks, you have side kicks, front kicks, and you have axe kicks. All of these come from different angles. And this axe kick isn't seen in MMA because you can't pull off these angles without someone punching you in the face and leaping in to punch you. So that's why you don't really see a lot of axe kicks in MMA. It's all about the distance management. But he goes, he lands it on the arm so they don't call point. And if you're curious, the match or the round stops whenever somebody gets hit, whenever somebody gets tagged. I watch this next round how this guy almost kicks that guy in the dick. And then an example of that distance management, he couldn't find the range for that two-touch back kick. So he fell on the mat. If this was MMA, he'd go and stomp his face in. And another thing about Taekwondo is this this shit makes you so tired so fast. Oh, and then here we go. Here we go. Controlling. Boom. And he's all the way in the blue already. I want to, I want to, uh, let's, whoo, rolling away. Let's think about the blue here as lava. You don't want to get in to the blue. Oh, he didn't call point, so he kicked him over the head. He's like, yeah, like he just said, if you better be paying attention, he could have kicked you a lot harder. And this is the same guy from the beginning that was backing up too much, which is another thing. And he's a smaller opponent. That's why if you're the smaller opponent in Taekwondo, you need to use your kicks to the body more because you're not going to get to the head as easily. Loose stance, light on the feet. Good sidekick. Tries to go for the head next. This guy, he likes to stand on one foot a lot. I'd be curious to see if he kicks him in the leg, tries to take that base away from him. Angle out. There we go. That's what I've been looking for. Right here. Watch how the guy in the blue is cornered. He's cornered right now. So now what I want to break down is angles because this is a very important moment in this match. Even the guy that's recording shouts out, Angle, angle, angle. Now, what does this mean? I talk about this all the time. It's so important in Taekwondo. You see how blue over here has his back turned to red? He is going to, no matter what, be out of position whenever he puts this foot down. So, angle. What does that mean? We'll see here how he steps back. And now, you can't go this direction. Why can't you go this direction? Because his rear foot is going to fucking snap your head off. That's Everybody talks about stance. And it's a, it's a topic in MMA that people talk about stance is important. But they don't talk about why it's important. This is why angles and stance are important. Especially in Taekwondo. Because this rear leg will murder him if he goes this way. So what he has to do is go the other way to escape. Right? And the way that he does this is so masterful. He kind of frames off and then slips to the side, and now they're both equal ground. It's a 50-50 right now. Look at where their feet are now. They're both um, in the middle, 
and foot to foot. And another thing is the stance. Which stance you're in? Are you in southpaw or orthodox? Makes a lot of difference in Taekwondo. Oh, good push sidekick. Another. Oh, there we go. Prime example of distance management. This is a shit about Taekwondo that makes it entertaining. This next clip reminds me of Wonder Boy Thompson. How he can kick over someone's shoulder and not see it coming. That's what this next clip reminds me of. So you see how this push kick? Good, successful. Now he's in the corner. Now both of them try to jump at the same time, and one capitalizes. Now look at his left leg. Goes right over the top. That's what I was talking about with the outer crescent kicks, inner crescent kicks. You see things from different angles whenever you take punches out of the equation. And you'd be surprised how much of a difference it really makes. It's all about position whenever you're kicking with the spinning back kick. And we saw this with Gaethje the other night. Boom, right to the liver. He knows that that guy was going to jump. He's been doing it. And oh my. I've been there so many times. One of them has longer legs. I believe it's a dude in the blue. It looks like it. He's not really using his range as good as back kick guy, we'll call him. Because well, there you go. Fucking back kicks again. And here, look. Distance management. Fucking awkward exchanges in Taekwondo all the time. Now watch in this next clip. He, the guy in the blue, has been standing on one leg for most of the sparring session. He knows that it's going to take the guy in the blue a second to fully put this foot back down. And while he's waiting for that, he's going to angle out because he's found himself in the corner. And now, angle out. He knew he was going to go because he keeps lifting up that foot. Oh, that is that is a amazing fucking tornado kick. And that used to be one of my favorites. Uh, a lot of people call it different names, but that tornado kick, it comes out of nowhere. As a good coach would, the guy that got liver kicked now has to find a way to get out of a corner. He's now put into the corner and he has to find a way out. The best thing that he could do is faint. An angle. Now, what does that mean? He acts like he's going to go one direction and then goes the other. Now, why would it still be dangerous for him to go this direction? Well, that's because he would be met with the closest leg that's to his target. So instead of the rear kick, if he went with the rear kick from this position, it might be too far away. But the other options that he has aren't really that good either. You're stuck in the corner. You can go to your right, but like I said, you're met with this round kick that's still going to have power if you move into it. Now, there's a third option that people don't usually think about when you're talking about angles. Um, if you are stuck in a corner and you can't take an angle, like this guy is kind of in that position where he can't really go left and he can't really go right. So what do you do in that situation? Well, you can go forward. If he goes with a push kick, feints, question mark kick, spinning back kick, anything to lessen the chances that this guy right here strikes first. If he strikes first and then gets him to back up, that's also another way out of this corner. But this challenge that he was presented, I've seen that he's he might he might get fucking liver kicked again for all we know. So there we go, and he chose the forward option. The guy ran away. I'm trying to do a fucking breakdown over here in this guy. Now for the comeback of the century, we got the Liver King reclaiming his throne, and I think that's where we're going to end this video. Shout out to the people that were, you know, sparring. They seem like all great people. I love the environment. Um, watch that original video if you just want to watch that. Anyway, guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.